So welcome back to the channel and welcome to the channel if you're a first time viewer. We get lots of questions on the channel about supply chain careers. And this week, I'm going to be talking to someone who's had what I think is a pretty amazing career in supply chain and beyond. Mark Powell, an old friend of mine, and that's coming right up. So hi, Mark. You're coming in from Auckland. Great to talk to you again. Yeah, nice to see you, Rob. It's been a while, but it'd be nice to see you in person at some stage. <laughs> yes, it would. Now, now, Mark, I don't want to embarrass you, but I often sort of hold you up as an example of what you can do with a supply chain career. Um, and I, I don't want to steal your thunder. Maybe we could sort of talk through your career and some of the highlights and then maybe I can sort of dig a little bit deeper and say, well, what are some of the secrets to having a career like that? Well, uh, that's very kind of you, Rob, especially as long as you don't share any stories of when we were students together. That would, no. <laughs> that would dispel any images <laughs> overall. What we'll happens on tour stays on tour. <laughs> but I, I think uh, in terms of just describing my career, I, I've got a little slide I use, and I'll, I'll pull yeah. that out, uh, and, and that um, I think can be helpful. Uh, it's, it's a sort of a once, my, a sort of 35, 36-year career on a page, I tend to call it. Uh, so I'll just quickly talk about that, and then uh, that'll perhaps be a stimulus for a few questions. If you see right in the beginning there is mining and a flag that's called the NCD, the National Coal Board. And I started my uh, career originally in underground coal mining. I grew up in a very industrial working class area in South Wales in the UK. And I went into underground coal mining. Uh, I was sponsored by what was the National Coal Board to do a mining degree. And I then did the underground uh, training. Mining engineering is really training to be a mine manager. I went through all that training in my early 20s. I thought I'd be there for life. And people talk about disruption. Uh, well, that industry in uh, 1980 in, the, in South Wales employed 25,000 people. By 1990, employed 300. And so by the, by the mid-1990s, I knew I needed to change direction. At 27, I really had to start afresh. Uh, and I actually went into retail. I got a job uh, as a retail store manager with a UK retailer. And uh, yeah, it was like training to be a doctor and then suddenly finding out there were no patients. Uh, I completely started again. Uh, in retail, I've been there a very short while and serendipity uh, stepped in. I was on a training course and the head of logistics of that retailer, which was a company called Iceland, was on that course speaking. We taught at a chat in the bar and he said, hey, come and work in logistics. Uh, and that's what happened. And that started my journey in logistics and supply chain. And so really, I then worked progressively for many years uh, for, for either retailers or third party logistics providers. And you can see some of the names up there. For a, for a long period of about 20 odd years. Uh, eventually emigrated to New Zealand uh, in 2002, uh, was head of logistics and supply chain for a well-known retailer in New Zealand called the Warehouse Group, and then moved more into the general management, becoming CEO of Warehouse Stationery, one of their businesses, and then CEO of the whole Warehouse Group. I'm now uh, more in governance. I'm on the board of JB Hi-Fi in Australia, for example, and Kiwi Property. Now, that, that's a very quick journey I think uh, down the right hand side, you can also see academic. And um, I think some of the key things that I point out is when I, you know, I never expected to go to university. And when I did my mining degree, I think I learned about learning. And when I'd moved across to retail and, and then retail logistics, I, do, I actually remember being in a distribution center and thinking, well, somebody must design this place. Somebody must teach this stuff. And that was actually a stimulus for me to find out that you could do a master's in logistics. And that's where I met Rob, which now is. 30 years ago, <laughs> which is a bit scary, uh, doing oh, a master's yeah. in logistics at, Clair at uh, Cranfield. Um, then later, as I was more in general management, I thought, well, they must teach this stuff, so, you know, finance, culture, strategy, and I did an MBA. Uh, later on in my life, as I wondered about the bigger questions in my life, I, wondered, you know, I thought, well, they must teach stuff about philosophy and theology, and I did some study in that space. So in parallel with that career was a journey of learning. There were moments, I think, of serendipity, being in the right place at the right time and more taking opportunities. But that's a very quick whip through of over 30 odd years, but I'll now uh, just stop there and uh, yeah. hopefully that's a catalyst to ask questions and explore perhaps some of the more detail. Yeah, stuff. so I mean, that, that, that's an amazing journey. And um, you know, when, when you look back on that, I, I know we've known each other a very long time and I, I know to a, to a certain extent that was a very planned career. Is, is that true that you were very careful in the roles that you selected, that it would sort of fill out your CV? Yeah, I often use this word paradox to describe leadership when I'm talking on leadership um, and that. There is paradox. It's both planned and unplanned. Leadership is both directive and participative. 
it, it, you know, it, it, it's spontaneous and um, you know, also re really deliberate. So in a way, it looks very planned in hindsight. Um, I think a lot of strategy looks very planned in hindsight. Uh, and it could look very planned. It was more about positioning yourself to take opportunities. You know, so for example, you know, when I went and did the Masters at Cran Cranfield that we did together, Rob, um, I knew it was the right thing to do. I needed to learn, but I didn't know what opportunities it would open, but it did open opportunities. Um, and similarly with other, other steps. So it's sort of what I called plan, what I call plan spontaneity. You prepare yourself, you plan uh, to be, allow you to be able to be positioned and equipped uh, to take opportunities as they arise. I think that would be how I describe it. But then it looks very planned in hindsight. I mean, there are some wonderful um, sort of examples and quotes in the business world. And, um, you know, I think Richard Branson is often attributed with quite a few where, you know, you grasp opportunities, even, even though you think maybe you're not quite ready. Was that to a degree kind of what you were going through in some of your roles that you knew it was going to be a stretch, but it was the right thing? I think so, Rob. I think when you look back on your career, when, you, know, you do realize you were actually not ready for most opportunities you took. Um, but that's how you learn. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, you equip yourself to be ready to take it. Uh, and then you carry on learning. I, I think about virtually every major role I took in my 30s, uh, when I took over a role to run the start of Walmart's logistics in Canada. I look back now at 32. Uh, it was a crazy journey. With, you know, now I think, wow, was I ready? I was ready enough. Um, and, and similarly, you know, running Tesco's logistics in the UK, I was ready enough. Mm. Um, and and that, then, you, then you step into it. And so I suppose the equipping part, you know, be it with experiences and with uh, education, you know, is just giving you enough confidence that it's, you're informed enough, it's not arrogance to step into those roles but you recognize you still got a lot more to learn as you're doing it. If you wait to be fully prepared, you, you know, it's the danger of perfectionism. Mm -hmm. You will procrastinate. Uh, and pr procrastination is then the enemy of progress. Uh, and, and perfectionism is often the enemy of progress because it leads to procrastination. So, um, yeah, that's how I'd see it. Yeah, Rob. Very, very true. So um, I, I'm trying to think back to that, that uh, slide now. How many degrees do you actually have? Is it three masters and a bachelor? Uh, two bachelors and uh, three masters. Through yeah. two bachelors and three masters. Yeah, it's a so, very weird. Right, a very practical question here. How do you fit in all that study? I mean, when we did our masters together at Cranfield, that was full time for twelve months. Yeah. But was was some of the other stuff part time? Yeah, a couple of degrees they were part time. Um, my MBA, the MBA I did, and uh, an MA I did in theology philosophy. Um, I think part time study can be much harder. Uh, you've got to have a um, a very uh, understanding spouse um, and it's there are is a time of life aspect of some of those things and then there's a pacing aspect the good thing about a lot of part-time study now is it can, it is flexible and can be paced I did my MBA over a, a three three and a half year period uh, the masters I did in philosophy theology I, I, I took seven years mm. so it's it's you know we do we all time management is critical we can all waste a lot of time i think if we look at the time now wasted on facebook wasted on you know, linkedin wasted on twitter wasted on watching netflix um you know i think what i enjoy about committing to a formal formal study is it forces you to manage your time better mm. and the time is usually there if you plan it well um but but there are sacrifices uh there are there and it's a tension but it's worth it i think good Good point. Um, so you, you actually made the move sort of from one side of the world to the other. And many, many people on the channel here talk about, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm based in country X and I really want to get to, you know, Australia or the United States or Canada. Um, what, was, what were some of the challenges that you had to go through? I mean, is, is it, you know, that much of an upheaval? How, how easy is it to find a job the other side of the world? Um, well, I think part of, if you're going to think about you, you, it's this again, planning, but also be spontaneous. You know, I was thinking ahead that I wanted to live not in the UK for quite some time. We moved to Canada when I was in, in my early 30s. Uh, we loved it in Canada, except it's too cold. 
but while we were there, we started thinking about, well, where would we like to live long term uh, for our family? And we were always decided we want to be settled before our daughter started high school. Um, and, you know, it's about working out that life phase when your daughters are, or children are under 11. You, you can move around a bit, but I, th I think stability in high school is important. Um, so we were thinking about it. We ended up going back to the UK for some time, but it was always there on the horizon. And for me, you know, part of the equipping then was, well, you know, I did the MBA part time. I thought, well, that will show general management. I took opportunities. Um, but, you know, so so by the time I one thing is, if you're looking at moving to another country and you're thinking ahead, be equipped for when you move there, that you will have skills and experiences that would be attractive. If you have that, uh, arriving in a new country isn't easy. Um, you know, things you've done, which you think or others may think sound pretty impressive, can just be a shrug of the shoulders. You know, me running Tesco's logistics in the UK was still the biggest job I think I've ever had. It was 15,000 people, massive network for the, for the biggest retailer in the UK. In, in New Zealand, some people would just shrug their shoulders. Well, well, okay, yeah. You know, and so, 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 you, you know, so you're a logistics manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and so, you know, I think you've got to be prepared when you come to, um, put your ego to one side, um, you know, contact a lot of people, connect, um, you know, I, I contacted people just for a coffee and, and, and things like that. And then, you know, trust that doors can open. If you've got a good background, people will see it. Um, but, but it can take time. So it's, you know, again, one of those paradoxes, it's about being patiently impatient. Um, and I've sort of gone through that again, finishing as a CEO, moving into the non-executive director space. Uh, I moved into this non-executive director space. You've been a CEO of a company. You know, it, it, they haven't just fallen at my feet positions. You know, I, I've, I've met people. I'm not, I'm not sure I like the word networking. It sounds a bit too schmoozy to me, but um, you do connect with people. I've phoned, I've phoned up directors of companies and said, hey, can I just have a chat? I, I haven't gone to sell myself. I just genuinely asked them, what do you think what makes a good director? What do you think uh, challenges of CEOs becoming directors could be? You know, how do you do that? Uh, I'm, I'm just about to be offered another uh, ASX position. To, you know, and that came really, I, I just cold called the, the chair uh, and said, hey, can we have a coffee in Sydney? Um, and so I think that is worth doing and people are open to that. Um, you'll get some knockbacks, but um, I think it's, it's again, that planned opportunism, planned spontaneity, prepare yourself well, be prepared to work hard, but you know, you go to a bit to one side, be patiently impatient. Uh, and I do think doors will then open for people, but you have got to put the work in to get some good experience and perhaps some qualifications to back that, that help as well. So just on the, on the topic of um, qualifications, so a lot of people ask on our blog and on our YouTube channel, um, you know, I haven't gone to university yet. I'm thinking of doing APEX. I'm thinking of doing SIPs. Uh, um, you know, would you say to people, you know, take the jump, you know, do a university degree to kick off? Or would you really sort of be saying to people, you know, get a diploma or something, get your foot in the door, get some experience, and then maybe do a degree course? I think it's, I wouldn't have a one size fits all answer, Rob. Mm. Um, I do think keep moving is an important thing. <laughs> you know, keep moving. Uh, 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 and so if you're at your life stage, you are fortunate enough that you could, you know, take a year out and do a master's full time. You know, I was very fortunate. We just got married. We didn't have children and we took the leap, you know. Um, you, know uh, you, you know, if you've not done a first degree, uh, it might be good to do a, a SIPS or something like that to get yourself back into the habit of learning, uh, et cetera. So there's different pathways. I think the important thing is keeping moving, uh, not spending three years wondering uh, overall, you know, because uh, doors will open from what you do as well. And so that would be my view is not going to be prescriptive, but research well, look at different opportunities and pick, pick one you can go into and then other things may open from that. And, and I think it's very interesting how, you, how you've really sort of morphed your career from, you know, mining, complete disruption, then into supply chain, then into general management. And I suppose what we're learning from this is that, okay, it wasn't necessarily planned, but it was all about preparedness, wasn't it? And, and equipping yourself, as you say. Yeah, I think that's a good way of framing it, Rob. Mm. Um, 
yeah, preparing and equipping, which when opportunities then arise, you can take them. Um, and when you come to take them, you are equipped enough, um, but not fully prepared in that, that back to that other earlier conversation uh, as well. It can sound a bit woolly, but it's not, you know, uh, it's not either. Yeah. So if we could somehow try to pull that together and, and maybe sort of three key tips out of that, um, what would, what would you say those would be? Number one is I do think in this world now, you know, have a learning mindset would be number one. You know, when you walk, you know, whatever you're doing, whether you're working in a, uh, a forecasting and planning department for a, a company, whether you're working in a warehouse, start thinking about, well, who decides how this is designed? Who makes these decisions? Who, how is this designed? What, what is the company thinking of overall? You know, and where can I learn about that? So initially that may be in the more functional supply chain logistics procurement type spaces. But then as you move up in that area, you can start thinking about, well, what about the company overall? That's what, what's happening. What, who drives this? How do they make these decisions? Where am I perhaps not equipped? Often I think people, one of the languages they've got to learn is finance. So you know, finance for a non-financial manager it, it, you know, fits in there often to give confidence. And so it's, it's that, you know, a learning mindset, number one, you know, you could call, call that curiosity. Um, the second then, is with that learning mindset is do something, you know, don't just sit there in the abstract, do something. And whether we like it or not, uh, I'm not, you know, I, 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 degrees open doors, you know, they, you can do a degree and learn nothing, you know, um, I think, or learn very little, or you can use it. I do, I'm not somebody, I come from a background of a family where hardly anyone did it. Well, I was the first to stay on in school past the age of 15. But I think education does open doors. Uh, and qualifications can help you. They help you learn that. So do something uh, will be second. So learning mindset, do something. And then the third thing is be looking for opportunities and take them. You know, a, uh, an informed risk. You know, when I took the job to run Walmart's operations in Canada, you know, uh, for a third party pr provider that's starting up, literally me and my wife were sitting there. We had a phone call from Canada saying, do you want to come to Canada? I, I'd, I'd just done a job for a year. It was a great position. And we looked at each other and said, let's go for it, you know? And so you do have to take risks, you know, so, so but, but you're looking for them. You're, you're, you're looking for the opportunity. So learning mindset, um, do something, and then take opportunities when they can. And, and, and so that would be probably the three things, Rob, mm. I, I'd say. That's a great summary. And I, I remember when you uh, were doing that third party logistics role in Walmart and I dropped in to visit you and I think you'd, you'd, You'd stood up the warehouse and the whole thing in about six weeks or something, hadn't you? Was, oh, that was crazy. Well, yeah. Yeah. I, I actually do think there was a, uh, the, the idealism, and you could say somewhat na naivety, naivety yeah. made us take on something that I think now I go, yeah. wow, this is impossible. So sometimes it's, it's better than not be too informed. You know, that was crazy times. It's, the impulse of youth sometimes <laughs> is a good thing. It is, Rob. It is. You shouldn't forget that. <laughs> oh, well, Mark, I think that's, that's a fantastic insight. And uh, for anyone watching this, uh, I would just say, you know, here is something to aspire to. Don't, don't just sit, you know, in your logistics and supply chain role. You can really sort of get to the top of the tree. And, uh, you know, Mark has done that outstandingly and is now on the board of a number of listed companies. So there you go. And it all started in a coal mine in South Wales. Phenomenal. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, Mark. No worries, Rob. Great stuff. Now, uh, if you're new to the channel, you might want to just consider hitting the subscribe button. And uh, if you hit the bell, you'll be notified every time we have a new video coming out. And they come out on a Tuesday evening, Sydney time. And if you've got any more comments on uh, education or careers in supply chain, do comment down below and we'll do our best to answer your questions. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.